Hey guys, welcome back to this week's tutorial. This week I thought I would show you uh, another design with some decals. These are the new stag decals we have. I have them in a matte white and a matte black. Um, I thought I'd show you another decal application, how to mix some of our loose pigments as well, um, as well as some more Swarovskis. So before we start off, um, I thought I would show you how I did my background. So with the background, you're going to grab a little bit of black gel polish, wipe the excess off your brush. You don't want too much and I'm going to just apply that gel polish just to the top corner here. Sort of on an angle like that. And then we grab a white gel polish starting from this end here. We're going to sort of ombre it just really really roughly. If you want to use like a specific brush for it you can. I just use my white polish brush and then I just clean it before I put it back in. So I wipe off one side and then with the clean side I bring in some more white. It doesn't have to be precise, this is just our background. But I do want a little bit more black on the top. Alright, so you want something like that. I'm going to clean off my brush. and then pop that into cure for 30 seconds. Okay, while that's curing, I'm going to show you how I mix my pigments. Now, I've already mixed these pigments with a white because I was experimenting with some of the colors, but what I'm going to do is, you can see I've already mixed these, but I've popped some fresh no wipe top coat down and I'm going to pick up some pigments. This is the Asia Gold pigment and I'm going to mix that in with the clear. With pigments like this when you mix them with a white they go a pastel color. When you mix them with a clear they hold their shimmer. The trade-off is they're not as pigmented and they go quite see-through so that's why we've gone with our black background. I'm going to go in with our poly pocket pigment next which is a really bright pink so clean off your brush in between pick up some pigment and then mix that into your top coat and for our third and final color I'm going to go with our orchard which is like a light shimmery Really cool purple color. So add some of that into our clear. You only need a little bit as well, depending on how many nails you're doing. All right, so cleaning off our brush and I'm gonna pop the lids back on all of these. So now our color is fully cured. What I like to do is start off with our darkest color first, over here where the black is. And you can see that that gives it a really cool color shift. So that's going to be our sky. I'm wiping my brush off in between each color. Pick up your pink. Bring that through. And these colors blend really, really well together. So you don't need to worry about blending them too much. And what I did for the bottom layer as well is I actually got the orchard and I mixed it with a little bit of white. So I'm going to pop some there just like that just to give it more of a pinky purpley effect and then our Asia Gold and then I'm going to go over with that and blend that all together. If you want to add little hints of gold at the top you can. 
you sort of just want to get like a really cool galaxy aurora theme sort of happening perfect and let's cure that for another 30 seconds okay so we're back and fully cured so this is the effect that we've got so far what I'm going to do is go in with uh, our black stamp so I'm using the stamping plate JQL16 I've numbered all the plates I haven't named them so they're easy to find and we're going to go in with a black because I'm using a white stag I thought I would go with black you can choose to use a black stag and do your background in white however you feel so let's on a clean stamping plate apply our black polish evenly and then give it a firm scrape and then pick it up. Now don't worry that there is a gap. With these bigger colors or bigger designs, it can be a little bit difficult to actually um, get them full coverage or in one go. So what I like to do is I just stamp my design on and if there's a really big open space like that, I get my stamping polish dab all the excess off and then just fill in the gaps because I've dabbed the excess off it will dry quite quickly and then when you top coat it it blends in really really well and that's a trick I use to pick up big designs instead of trying to pick them up over and over and over again I fill them in that way. All right, so I'm going to leave that to dry for about 30 seconds and then come straight back. Okay, so we're looking pretty dry right now. Um, and I think we're good to go with our decal. If you wanted to stamp a few other little designs up here, you could. If you had like a little moon or something that you wanted to add up there, you could. Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is this time um, but this is our white matte decals I've accidentally dropped some glitter on there but you can see they're not super easy to see but if you bend them in the light you can see all the designs so let's pick up uh, I don't want to go too big so let's pick this guy up here to place him just about there okay and then pressing down it's a lot easier if it's on a client because you don't have to worry about your tip but press that down and then with the little overhanging excess I'm just going to file that off Just like that. That way you don't have to worry about that peeling later. So there's our stag in front of our forest. And then let's top coat that one. If you wanted to use a technique that I've demonstrated in my previous video, you can. Um, and that technique is I like to do a base gel or a builder gel cure that give it a buff and then i top coat um with these stickers they're quite thin they're thinner than the opal stickers so i just go straight in with a top coat and i've been wearing these decals on my nails for about a week just with top coat and they haven't peeled so as long as you can get them nice and flush um oh straight here and we're going to do another layer of top coat over this anyway. So I am using a sticky top coat for this one. Once you're all even, give it a cure for 30 seconds. 
With my crystals today, I've decided to go with the Blue Con SS9, SS12, as well as the AB SS3s to fill it in. Um, with your crystal placement, you can go as little or as much as you like with this. Um, the cool thing about this design is, uh, if we get into focus, there we go. You can leave it as is. Um, I've chosen to use a really long tip. So it might be better to put more crystals up here, but you can see that the way those pigments are sitting, it's given it like a really cool aurora. Almost like, yeah, I, I guess aurora would be the term that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, almost like, like that really cool aurora night sky sort of thing. I don't know. Let's move on. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue and open my jar. I like to use the brush on glues for this. Um, like I explained in my previous videos, depending on the type of crystal placement I'm going for, I like to use glue or gel. I'm using glue this time. Just putting it on there and with your pickup tool, I'm going to get a couple SS12s and then I'm going to put a couple of my SS9s on the sides. You do need to work quite quickly with this glue so as long as you know where you're going to place it you're good to go. Um, if you want to, if you're hesitating on the placement and you want to change it up, um, I don't recommend using glue because a lot of the time, as soon as that glue gets tacky, um, and you set your crystals down, let's get you back into focus, they stick very, very fast. Might need a tiny bit more here. So it does take a little bit of getting used to when you work with a glue instead of a resin or a gel. But I find that it, they hold the absolute best, which is why I only use gel if I'm using really big crystals. There we go. So just a really simple placement just on the top. Um, I'm going to let that dry. If you have a spray activator, you can use a spray activator if you want. Um, if you don't know what a spray activator is, I'll show you the one that I have. So this is my spray activator and that's the stuff that you get for your dip system. Some systems have a spray activator that is a brush on. You can use that too, but with this one, I give it two sprays. That was three, but I usually just give it two sprays. Let it dry and that will instantly set and lock in all of your crystals. Make sure before you top coat you let it dry because even though this stuff sets and dries really quickly, you don't want to top coat over it because you will get bubbles. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm going to top coat, so top coat around your crystals, sealing in any excess glue, and then we top coat the whole design. And there you go, there is our Sunset Aurora Nighttime Skag in the forest. I hope you liked this tutorial. Uh, sorry, it was a little bit longer than the other ones. I did want to show you guys how to mix pigments, especially how they look uh, mixed in with a white and mixed in with a clear. If you want to just dab your, crisp, uh, your pigments straight on, you can. But I find that when you top coat them, they can contaminate your top coat. So 
I prefer mixing them on a palette, putting them on and then curing. I prefer to use a no wipe top coat when I mix the pigments. Um, only when I stamped, the stamping polish works better over a non-sticky surface. Sometimes it won't stick to a sticky surface. So I do recommend wiping your inhibition layer before you apply um, any stamping designs. And also your decals will stick better to a non-sticky surface as well. Um, yeah, if you decide to give this design a go, make sure you tag us at Unicorn Lab Nail Supply on Instagram or join our, our, our support group on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Bye.